Hello, welcome to the talk on our paper, Understanding Tilt in Esports, a study on young League of Legends players. My name is Minerva Wu. I am a fourth year PhD student at UC Irvine's Department of Informatics. I'm interested broadly in social emotional learning around game spaces. When I started, I was looking at definitions of toxicity and this idea of tilt came up. This project is an exploration as to what tilt looks like for young players. So first, what do we mean by tilt? As a term, tilt was adopted from pinball, where frustrated players would hit the pinball machine. The machine would flash the word tilt and would end the game. This term was adopted by poker communities in the 1980s and 1990s for as an explanation for why poker players would continue to play when losing and actually make worse decisions. Traditional sports carry on this meaning by tilt by associating it with primarily poor decision making and gambling and betting. As adapted to esports, tilt is associated with frustration, rage, and negative emotions, then in turn starts to negatively impact decision making and gameplay. Other researchers have highlighted the role of motivation going into play. Some definitions emphasize repeated failures, losing streaks, or the feeling of frustration when a player has tried really hard but just doesn't seem to get results. In general, we refer to tilt as when a player gets emotional, and these emotions get in the way of making the objectively best play at any particular point in time. Going to this project, we had four main questions. How do players define tilt for themselves? What triggers tilt for them? How do they respond? And finally, do they see tilt as something they can change and get better at? We call this last concept tilt malleability, inspired by Carol Dweck's concept malleable versus fixed mindset. We also had two a priori hypotheses. First, we predicted that the different triggers would create different responses. Secondly, based off literature that students who saw intelligence as malleable were more likely to persist in the face of challenge and frustration, we predicted that players who thought that tilt was malleable would have a different response than those who did not. Corresponding to these research questions, we had the following open response items and final multiple choice item. For each of the open response questions, two researchers reviewed the responses that, that come up with a coding scheme. One researcher then applied the codes and everything was checked for internal consistency and coding drift. For the interviews, three researchers generated a coding scheme based off three transcripts. I then correlated the rest of the transcripts. For this study, we surveyed students and staff from the North American Scholastic Esports Federation, or NASIF, a high school esports federation where students can set up teams and compete in the league with other high school teams. NASIF has a presence of over 900 schools in the U.S. internationally, and we managed to collect 95 surveys and conduct eight interviews with staff before the start of the COVID-19 pandemic and subsequent shutdown last March. Just a little bit of context on the game. All of these students played League of Legends, a popular multiplayer online battle arena type game by Riot Games. This game is playing with five members on each of two teams, blue and red. While the overall goal of the team is to take objectives and destroy the end of the team's base, players also have individual metrics for performance. Each player's performance and the team's overall performance relies heavily on their teammates, whether it means communicating enemy positions or helping out others. Their in-game chat and all chat functions, as well as non-verbal ping system to facilitate communication. Results. First, we confirmed that player definition was consistent with the definition of tilt that we saw in previous literature and cultural definitions. Students did tend to emphasize the emotional component of tilt, like anger and rage, but the behavioral component, like being confused or deteriorated in gameplay, came up in staff interviews. Next, we looked at what causes tilt. Most players were in some way tilted by other players, whether it's the teammates, their opponents, someone doing something poorly, or someone saying something. Students were also really hard on themselves and got frustrated when they felt like they made a mistake or if they just weren't playing as well as they knew they could or doing as well as they knew they could. How do players respond to tilt? A third of responses involved exiting the game. This was a widely recommended strategy for dealing with tilt. It's not quitting the middle of the game, but stopping after a game and taking a break, maybe getting a snack or playing a different game. The idea was to return to the game with a fresh mind. A quarter of players also had positive reactions to tilt, where they were tried to actively do something in game to improve their emotions. They take deep breaths, try to figure out what went wrong and how to fix it without blaming anyone. Another quarter of players responded negatively. This is the highly traumatized image of tilt that involves screaming or slamming the keyboard or lashing out at other people and saying rude things. Finally, almost a fifth of students just did nothing, or as we called it, lump. In interviews with coaches, lumping was called the sneakier side of tilt, where instead of doing something and getting really worked up, players would just stop communicating. They didn't lash out, but they didn't try to fix the situation and would basically give up on the game. Finally, two-thirds of students and all the coaches thought it was possible to change how easily someone gets tilted. Breaking it down a little bit more, 12% of students said that tilt was not changeable, and 21% said they simply didn't know. We also confirmed our hypotheses. First, different types of triggers do elicit different types of responses. When other players were the cause, players had a mix of responses, but primarily responded positively, trying to calm down and recollect themselves. When frustrated by their own mistakes or losing, though, they were split between negative responses and exit responses. As mentioned, Exit is generally considered a good strategy. In poker, leaving the table is considered a good strategy for breaking even, if even though they weren't winning. Taking a break was also frequently recommended advice for dealing with tilt in the esports community. As consistent with literature on intelligence malleability, we also found that beliefs about tilt malleability did affect how a player responded to tilt. 
players who thought that it was possible to change how easily they got tilted had a positive effect on how they responded when tilted, swaying them towards the positive and exit strategies. These hypotheses actually complement each other. These partial tables look at how trigger affects response while holding malleability constant. We found the same patterns hold. When players believe that tilt is malleable, they tend towards more positive responses in all cases, except when dealing with themselves and their own frustration. When players believe that tilt is fixed, players tend to be more negative or simply leave. Our biggest takeaways are this, that players are tilted most commonly by their own teammates. However, they were tilted most heavily by their own performance and frustration, reacting the worst when they were mad at themselves. Finally, believing that tilt is malleable tends players towards positive responses. And given these takeaways, we see a good opportunity for using tilt as an opportunity for social emotional learning. Social emotional learning refers to an array of skills related to managing oneself as well as interacting and cooperating with other people. Managing tilt goes hand in hand with social emotional learning and self-management because tilt harms gameplay. Preventing or getting better at self-management, social awareness, and relationship skills is part of dealing with tilt, which is part of learning to play better. Interviewed coaches were already working on this and had a few strategies for managing tilt on their teams. For example, they worked on changing individuals' attitudes from just winning to specific immediate goals that they could do or improve. They also encouraged players to always be communicating and to be aware of how their restrictions could affect the team. As one staff member said, a lot of our students don't really know how to be good losers. Esports, especially in high school and middle school, can really help teach gamers how to game correctly and game properly and be good citizens of the world, end quote. This mentorship and being able to be better gamers and be better people through games is part of how esports and games can be part of social emotional learning education and also what I am personally interested in. Thank you so much for your attention today. If you're interested, please check out our full paper in the Kai Proceedings, and also feel free to contact myself or JSOC and the other work that we do in the Games Learning Society Center. Thank you.